so. Or maybe it's at my parents' house. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm not going to say anything because I don't know. Was there a song list up here? No, there was nothing, there was nothing there. Just keep fret in mode until it says he. Bunch of wimps. <laughs> Come on, man.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Buckley Road Baptist Church. Happy Mother's Day to all of our lovely mothers out there. Let's all stand, grab, an, grab a hymn book, and turn to hymn 392, Rock of Ages. Hymn number 392, Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy rib inside which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? These for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for rest. Foul I to the fountain fly, watch me, Savior, or I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne, rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Amen. Good singing this morning. So good to see everybody here. Again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Also, wish my uh, parents it's a, a happy anniversary. It's your anniversary today. I won't tell you how long they've been married. You can ask them, okay? But uh, with that, I'd like to ask, uh, let's see, Brother Alan Mitz to open us up in a word of prayer. Amen. You may be seated, and the choir will now sing.
Amen. Let's all stand again. Let's stand again. Grab a hymn book. Turn to hymn 380. On Christ I stand. Hymn number 380. On Christ I stand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. A higher plane than I have found, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. On every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. A higher plane than I have found. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. Dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. A higher plane than I have found, on Christ the solid rock I stand. Amen. You may be seated. Well, amen. Welcome to Bucket Road Baptist Church. Just want to say happy Mother's Day today to all the mothers in here. Our ushers have some gifts. If a usher would come forward this time, and we'd like to give a gift to each one of our mothers that are here today. And so if you are a mother, please stand at this time. And as uh, ushers make the way back, we have a, uh, a gift card for you to get some coffee. And also we have a nice pen there. That's a Buckley Road Baptist Church pen with the Buckley Road Baptist Church logo on there. And a really nice writing pen. And so uh, uh, just a gift uh, uh, for you. And uh, we want to just, uh, uh, just uh, be a blessing to all the mothers that are here today. And so can give them a round of applause there. <laughs> Amen. I'm just watching to make sure we have enough, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord for all the mothers that are here today. And I uh, hope you have a special day and your family treats you right. And, uh, and Paxton woke up this morning and made his mom breakfast, spelled mom with uh, bacon and eggs. So that was a, it's a special treat there. She got to eat her name, or eat mom, or, so that was good. Praise the Lord. Oh, great. We ran out. Too many mothers came. We have pens. Can you give them pens? All right. There's, there's plenty more pens back there. And then uh, we owe you guys gift cards so I, I blame that on Aaron it's his fault he didn't get enough gift cards so what we'll do is we're going to send somebody out now got the card yeah. send somebody out brother one of those ushers will go out and we'll get some more cards how many more ladies we got let's count it up raise your hand if you didn't get a card all right because we want to make sure we don't miss anybody one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen all right get at least 20 more Get 20 more of those. Oh, all right. All right. Give them the pens at least. Get the pens for now. This is embarrassing, you know. I can't believe Aaron did that to us. All right. I didn't tell him how many to get, you know. It wasn't my fault, all right. <laughs> that's what happens when men are running the show, right? But, uh, that's why we need our wives to help us, you know. But I didn't make her help me with this one because she's got to relax, you know. So, all right. What's that? Yeah, get 20 more. Get 20 more, and we'll get you those at the end of the services, all right? All right, so uh, we have some sign-up sheets now that we want to we'll send back there. And so this Saturday is uh, the Ladies' Zest for Life luncheon at 11 o'clock from 11 to 2. 
We have that luncheon, uh, $10 uh, for uh, sixth grade and up, $5 for uh, uh, five years old through fifth grade. And, uh, and so uh, if you have not already signed up for that, get that signed up. And man, it's going to be a special banquet. Got a special speaker going to be here. Dixie Sasser will be here. And, uh, and uh, man, she was, uh, I know she was a joy at the ladies' thing last year. And so look forward uh, for the ladies hearing from her. And also, Brother Sasser will be here on Wednesday night. And so I want to invite everybody back for Wednesday night, all right? This past Wednesday, there was about 20 people here, all right? I don't know. I think everybody was sick. That's what I'm blaming on, all right? Because uh, I know it couldn't be anything else, right? But uh, come back. Come this Wednesday. Brother Sass will be here, missionary to Israel. And, man, a great speaker, just a great speaker. And you will enjoy him. So mark it down. You know, put it in your reminder. Remind yourself to be here Wednesday. You're not going to want to miss hearing him speak. And uh, so that's this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, all right? And uh, you can come to that because we don't have services tonight. So you get a break tonight, uh, but uh, come Wednesday. Uh, but you don't get a complete break because I did put a uh, online message. There's a message that will come on at 6 o'clock. So join in for that. Another special message for ladies uh, or for mothers and, uh, well, for everybody, but uh, specifically Taylor to mothers also. And so make sure you join online to watch that. It will be online services only, so no live services uh, here tonight. Also on that uh, sign-up sheet, there is another... Um, uh, there's another sheet behind that for the, uh, it's the Sight and Sound, the ladies' trip for the Sight and Sound to see David. And so the deadline to sign up for that is Wednesday, okay, because they have to purchase the tickets and all that. And, uh, you know, they have to purchase them way ahead of time so they have enough. So make sure you sign up for that if you'd like to go to that, all right? And those are the ladies' things coming up. And then I also want to mention... The teen banquet is in two weeks here, May the 20th. And so this is for everybody who has teenagers. Uh, they're welcome to come, and the whole family is welcome to come. And we're going to have a really nice banquet. We're putting up some good plans for it. And I actually, got, we got some really special things uh, for this year. I don't want to spoil the secret, but uh, some really special things uh, that, we're, that we're bringing in for it. And so this is for all teens and their parents, and so the whole family is welcome to come to this. You don't have to be a part of the youth group or a part of the uh, a part of the pro teens. Uh, it's for all the youth group, and so are all the teens. And so it'll for those who aren't a part of the youth group, this will be an introduction and kind of tell you what it's about, what we do, uh, talk about pro teens, what we do there. And we have a special speak for, for that. My dad will be the special speaker. And so uh, looking forward to, to hearing, hearing him. And uh, I think it'll be good for uh, parents and teens to be there uh, for that. It'll be a great night. And so uh, we just need to get a count of that. So we'll be sending a sign-up sheet next week. Um, and uh, we'll go around and i ask you personally and so that uh, we can get you signed up for that. All right. And so that's coming up. And then May 30th, Memorial Day picnic uh, Monday. Uh, it'll be uh, uh, at 10 o'clock. We'll meet down at the Clay Park, bring uh, uh, food to pass there, and just have a good time of fellowship there uh, for Memorial Day. All right. And I believe that is all the announcements that I have. So uh, uh, at this time, yes, Brother Allen. Yes. Friday. Uh, this Friday is uh, there's doing a hymn sing here at the church. And that is uh, what time is that? Six o'clock. There it is. It's right there in the bulletin at six o'clock. And that reminds me um, tomorrow is the last class for the Faith Bible Institute for those who are in that. And uh, we're going to be meeting early at six o'clock uh, to eat also and to celebrate that. And so the Faith Bible Institute was great. I know everybody was in it, loved it. And uh, in a, probably a, um, a few weeks, we're going to have some testimonies uh, from people who were in that and just, uh, uh, just talk about it. And so maybe, maybe there's people that are here that are interested in getting involved in it. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's, uh, the three years goes through the entire Bible, and it's an intense kind of training about it. And it's, it's geared towards... Um, church members and so you don't have to be like I'm going to Bible college it's geared towards all church members and uh, it's it's you get uh, credits for it if you want there's also an option to to audit the class they say where you don't have to take the tests or whatever but you get the materials 
and uh, you get to you get to come to the class and learn about it. But it's just a wealth of Bible knowledge, and the teacher, brother John Yates, is an amazing teacher. He's just so knowledgeable, uh, and uh, and just very interesting, keeps your attention. And so I encourage you to. Uh, 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 to think about that and pray about that. If you'd like to join for next semester, that'd be the fall semester. And so it starts up basically the time, same time school would start up. All right. This time, if you'll take your Bibles and open up to uh, Book of John, right? All right. And uh, Brother Tim will tell you exactly where to turn to. John 19 and verse 25. John 19, beginning at verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, <clears throat> the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. This time we're having a moment of silent prayer. If you'd like to come to the altar or remain in your seats, let's take a moment to worship the Lord and ask him to prepare our hearts to receive his word. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for this day, and I just uh, thank you, Lord, that we could take uh, this day, Lord, to uh, celebrate our mothers, Lord, and I know that uh, you know, every day we should uh, treat them with respect and love, Lord, but I pray that especially today we would show them uh, show them our love, uh, Lord, and I, I pray that you bless them on this day, Lord. There's a it's, a, it's quite a job to do, Lord, and parenting and mothering is one of the hardest jobs in the world, Lord. Uh, but, Lord, I pray you bless them for that, God. And, uh, Lord, I ask that your hand would be upon the services today, God, that you would be, you'd be truly uh, worshipped and glorified today, Lord, and that we would realize that uh, ultimately, uh, Lord, you are, you are the one who needs to be glorified most of all and lifted up and and, Lord, if we do that, if we all do that, Lord, then we will treat each other right, Lord. We have the love and respect that we need for one another. And, God, I pray that uh, right now, Lord, we'd be able to put aside any distractions and focus upon you, Lord, and, and, uh, and just how great and wonderful and powerful you are and how much you deserve to be worshipped, how much you deserve to be glorified, and that we would do that here today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This time the ushers will be taking the offering.
Brother Dave, would you pray for the offering for us? As she made her way to Jesus, she stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain, some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for her kind. Still on she came the shame that flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet and though she spoke no words everything she said was heard as she poured her love for the master from her box of alabaster and I praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and dry them with my hair. Alabaster box. I can't forget the way life used to be. I was a prisoner to the sin that had me bound. And I spent my days, poured my life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I had found oh, until the day when Jesus came to me and filled my soul with the wonder of his touch so now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of I've been why I love him so much. I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears. the 
Praise the Lord. Thank you for that uh, special this morning. I uh, enjoyed Brother Dave's uh, prayer. I don't know if you guys could, heard it, but, could hear it, but uh, said, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our Lord standeth forever. Amen. Amen. And so that, that's why I didn't get my wife flowers this morning, all right? So read the book, all right, woman? Just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Man, it's good to be here today. I. Uh, uh, the passage that we're uh, looking at here today in uh, John chapter 19, uh, verse 25, uh, verse 25 through 27. I remember uh, distinctly it was a teenager uh, reading, the, reading this verse uh, with my younger brother, uh, my younger brother Matt, who's uh, now a pastor, uh, also in Binghamton. And uh, we're reading this verse. We came to that where it said, woman, behold thy son. We just started laughing. Like, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> Like, Mom, look at me, you know. <laughs> Behold thy son. We, we didn't understand what that meant, but we thought it was really funny back then and, and didn't realize it. But today we're going to see what that, what that actually means, you know. And so we're going to look into that. But uh, first of all, I want to I wanna, uh, talk about a mother's joy. A mother's joy. A mother is uh, uh, filled with joy uh, when, when she has that child, you know, and when a child is born, there's just joy that comes to that. Of course, you know, uh, carrying the baby for nine months, and uh, especially as they're getting closer to the end, there's not a lot of joy there. And, uh, of course, during the labor a part of that, there's not a lot of joy that goes along there. And, uh, man, I, you know, I'll never forget, you know, uh, trying to coach my wife and comfort her through that and through those times. And, man, it was it was rough, you know, each, each uh, birth was different, and I, I remember uh, with Jax, she was just having that back labor, and I'm rubbing her back for hours, my arm's about to fall off, you know, but I'm not going to stop, you know, because she's going through the pain, and I, I want to help her through that, and man, just horrific pain, and you think like uh, after a, a woman has a baby, they're going to be like, that's it, never again, uh, but they often do have more children. Why? Because of the joy that they comes after that. They forget about the pain and they and they just remember the pure joy of of holding that baby. And I just remember the emotions that that came uh, when we had, when we had our first child and and then each child after that which is it's just the same emotions and and you're you're laughing and crying and just happy and and uh, there's just there's just emotions going all over the place. Uh, mother is just waiting in, in anticipation uh, for that day and for that baby to arrive. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the clothes are picked out and uh, uh, the dressers are full of baby clothes and uh, there's uh, cute outfits, you know, and there's, uh, they, they bring a bunch to the hospital ready to go there. And, uh, you know, everything's ready to go there. The, uh, the car seats uh, in the car, buckled in the car for months before the baby arrives, you know. And uh, I think about Mary. I don't know what she did, you know, that she came there on a donkey. So, I don't, you know, do they have a donkey seat for the baby? I don't know, you know. I don't know what they had. But, uh, you know, I mean, other countries, uh, and when we were in Dominican Republic, we saw, we saw mothers carrying their babies riding on motorcycles and, and mopeds going down the road, you know, infants, you know. And it's like, you know, wow, that's, that's crazy. And, uh, you know, we would never do something like that here. Well, that's, that's how it is, other places. And so, you know, how'd you do it back then without car seats? You know, I guess we'll never know, right? Uh, but uh, she, she had to carry her baby in any way. But you want to, you love that child. You want to protect that child. And it's just pure joy. Uh, you know, first-time parents are always 
super cautious, you know. They don't want everybody coming near them. Anybody has a sniffles, they're not allowed near my baby. And, and, and every time they come near, even close to stairs or something, they're, they're going, going out of their mind that that baby's going to uh, die if they walk near stairs, you know. And, and it's because that love you have for that child and the joy that, that, that comes from that. And, and then, I, of course, I think of Mary. You know, Mary, you know, the, the child that she was bearing was no ordinary child. It was no ordinary child, and, and in Luke, Luke chapter 1, I want to notice here in verse 35, Luke, Luke 1, 35, it says here, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And he says to, to Mary, this, uh, this child that, 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 that you will have, the child that you will be carrying will be a, a holy child. It will be the very son of God. And man, what a privilege she had. What a blessing that she had. Uh, let's back up in the same chapter, verse number 28. Verse 28 says here, And the angel, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, uh, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And he said, Bless, and the angel said to, to Mary, Blessed art thou among women. And it's a blessing to have children. Uh, you know, um, my brother told me many years ago that uh, brother, brother Gardner told him, you know, the more children you have, uh, the better because they're going to be a blessing to you when, they, when they're older, you know. And they'll be a blessing to you later on. And, and you, are, you are blessed if you have children. You have an heritage. And, and, and uh, you know, you're to train them up in the Lord. And so he said, you'll be blessed among women. In verse 46, in that same chapter, starting at verse 46, it says here, uh, when Mary uh, finds out she's going to have this child, this is what she says. She kind of sings a song of joy. It says here, and Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he, ha for he hath regarded the, the lowest state of his, of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Uh, uh, for he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. And so we, we see here that Mary is just filled with joy because of this privilege that she has to, to be the, the mother of Jesus. What a great privilege uh, that, that we have. And I believe that all mothers have hopes and dreams for their children. They have that little bundle of joy and you just envision that what this child is going to do and what they're going to grow up to be. And you, you have hopes and dreams that they'll do great things in this life. Uh, I want to tell you, Mary knew that her child would do great things. She knew that he would do great things because she knew that he was the very son of God. Well, let me tell you, having a perfect child, even if you have a perfect child, that does not eliminate all fears. That does not take away the worries of a mother. You might think you might you may think it would, but it, but it doesn't. And so a mother has great joy. But number two, I see a mother has anxiety. You may say, if I had a perfect child, uh, then I wouldn't have anything to worry about. You know, I'd be have nothing to worry about. I would just be able to live in perfect peace. It'd be fine. You know, and uh, I think uh, what mothers want today, probably, especially today, is they want some peace, you know. And uh, for those of you who have young children, it's dad's job now to wrangle the kids and, and so that they can have some peace today, you know. And, and they want peace, you know, but often if you're, if you're worrying about your children, you don't have that peace. You don't feel that peace. And so with kids uh, in the house, uh, the, the peace comes when the children are asleep, right? That's, that's when you have peace, when they're asleep in bed. And uh, I, mean, I mean, really asleep, not put to bed because they may get up a hundred times before that. But when they're actually asleep, that's when peace comes. 
Uh, it's easy to have the illusion that, that other mothers don't have the same problems that, that I have, you know, or that you have. Uh, you know, we think of Mary, man, had the perfect child. She didn't have any problems. And we think, well, other mothers, uh, they don't have the problems that I have with my kids. And, and other kids, they respect their mothers. Why don't you respect your mother? And, and we have this illusion that, hey, other homes are good and, and mine is not. And, and sometimes that's the illusion we have. See, Mary had the perfect child. But I believe that it's clear in the scriptures, as we read the Bible, as we read these scriptures, uh, that uh, Mary had uh, some, 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 some substantial worries in, in her life because of her child. And so I just want to take a, a look and take a kind of a few snapshots of what that have, might have looked like, uh, of what we can gather from the Word of God. In uh, Luke chapter number 2, starting at verse 34, It says here, And Simeon blessed them, and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set uh, for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And so I notice here that uh, after this baby is born, it is, it is prophesied to Mary that, hey, uh, you're going to suffer because of your son. You're going to suffer because of your son and what your son's going to go through. You're going to suffer some of those things. And Simeon re uh, reveals the, the roller coaster that she would go through having, uh, uh, being the mother of the very son of God. And he, she reveals, he reveals to her the, be, the deep pain that would be brought to Mary because of it. As it says there, yea, a sword shall pierce through thy soul also. And I, I would say that that's a good way to describe some very deep pain. A, a, soul, a sword piercing through your soul. And so she's saying, he, he's saying to her that, hey, uh, just because you have a perfect child doesn't mean, you know, you're not going to have any worries or fears. It's, it's not, it doesn't mean that everything's just going to be peaceful and smooth sailing. No, there's going to be some deep pain through this. Fast forward to... Um, Verse 48, verse 48 says, And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee a sorrowing. And so this is 12 years later. And uh, they had went to Jerusalem uh, uh, for the, the time of the Passover and everything. And uh, all of a sudden, they're, they're heading back. And all of a sudden, Jesus is nowhere to be found. Where did Jesus go? We can't find him. He is not with us. We just expected he's going to be with us. You know, you don't have to tell your perfect child to, to, to stay with mom and dad and to follow us. He knows. But he's not there. Where is he? And so, and so they go, and they finally found him, and he's speaking, to the, he's speaking in the temple to these people at 12 years old, and, and uh, they're not, and, and, and these people are amazed at what that, but, but mom, mom and dad, they're not amazed. They're like, why weren't you with us? We've been searching for you. We were sorrowful, and we were upset, and, and, and probably panic. Probably every mother has had a time of panic where you turn around, and your child's not there. And you're like, where are they? And most of the time it's short-lived. Maybe some of you have other stories where it's a little longer. Uh, but, man, it's panic. It's panic and it's sorrow. And, that, and they had to go searching for him and, and going to find him. They couldn't find him. And, and so it brought great sorrow at that time. He was missing. And now, uh, later on, Luke chapter 4 This is later on in his life where Jesus is starting to begin his earthly ministry. Chapter 4 and verse 28, it says here, And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. 
And so Jesus goes, and he's beginning his earthly ministry, and he's preaching, preaching to his hometown of Nazareth, and he's saying these things, and the people get furious at him. They're not behind him. They're not happy. They're not like, oh, yeah, we got the Messiah here, and, uh, and we're behind him, and, and you're going to start this ministry, and, and we're all for it. No. They were furious at him. Now, where was this? This was his hometown of Nazareth. His hometown rejected him. Now, how do you think that, that Mary felt? How do you think Mama Bear felt when her hometown, the people that she raised her son around, is rejecting her son? I mean, she knows he's the son of God. She knows he's going to do something special and something great, but, but his hometown is rejecting him, and they're furious at him, and now Mary has to continue living around these people that, that are furious at her son. And uh, I'm sure that doesn't feel too good for them. We want our children to be loved and accepted by others. We desire that, but that didn't take place. It upset her. Lastly, we see here, turn, turn to Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, now Jesus is, is, uh, has begun his earthly ministry and he's going out preaching and teaching and healing and, and doing all these kinds of things. And it says here in verse 20, And the multitude cometh together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. And so the multitude is, is in this house and they're trying to hear Jesus and listen to him. And there's just so many people packed in there. There's people outside the house looking in the windows and things like that. And, and, and he says that they're that they're so packed, tightly packed in there, it says they could not even eat bread. I mean, he's been here for, for days. It's, uh, he is without sleep. He is without food. And, 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 and they're, just, they're just there and preaching and teaching, and, and they're without. You know, as a, as a mother, I mean, you're the caretaker, man. You, your, your baby needs to eat, right? He needs to get some rest. He needs to take care of himself. And he's not doing that. Uh, he, he's not able to do that, and he's not doing those things. He's, he's going without sleep. He's going without these things. I want to continue here. And uh, verse, starting at verse 21, it says, And when his friends heard of it, uh, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub. And by the prince of devils casteth he out devils. And he, and he called unto them, and so, and he called them and said unto, the, unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And so now, uh, not only is he, is he there without, without food and without rest, and, uh, and he's tired out, and, uh, and he's just really down. Now he's got this group calling him a devil, calling him Beelzebub. And, and so he's not in a great situation. He's not in a situation that any mother would want her child in, and he's there. And so then we noticed uh, later on, and uh, later on we see in uh, verse 30, 30, it says, Because they said he hath an unclean spirit, th there came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And so uh, finally, uh, his mother gets there, and some of the disciples get there, and they're calling to him. They're trying to yell through these windows and get his attention and say, Hey, we brought you food, or you need a, you need a rest. And, and telling Jesus, You need to take a break. You need to stop this and, and go home and get some food and get some rest and get away from this mob that is starting to get angry. You need to get away from them. But then Jesus says this in verse 33. It says something very unexpected. And he answered them, saying, after they, they said, your mother's here, he said, who is my mother and my brethren? 
And so he asked that question, and, 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 I, and I would think that as a mother, you're standing there and you're trying to, you're worried about your child. You want them to eat. You, you want them to get some rest, and you want them to get away from this group. And, they, and then and they finally tell him, your mother's here. And he says, who's my mother? Who are my brethren? I'm sure that didn't make her feel very good. That didn't make him, her feel very good that he was saying that. What do you mean, who's my mother? I raised you. I'm right here. I love you. I want to help you. I'm here to, to try to save you out of this. I'm trying to take care of you. But he says, who is my mother and who is my brethren? Mary's only human. I'm sure that hurt. That didn't feel good. She didn't want that. She cares about him. But I think he's saying, kind of saying, making a statement here at this time that, hey, my relationship is going to change with you. My relationship is going to change with my mother. I'm beginning to fulfill my earthly purpose, uh, my purpose for coming to the earth here. And so who would sustain, what would sustain Mother uh, Mary through this as she realizes this relationship is going to change? What would give her peace despite the anxiety that she is feeling at this time? Turn to John chapter 2. John chapter 2, starting at verse 1, it says, In the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Both Jesus uh, was called and his disciples uh, to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. And so then it continues going on. And, uh, and, 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 he, and he talked about Jesus performing this first miracle. Verse 4, Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. And, uh, and then he goes on and he performs this miracle and he turns the water into wine. It was the first miracle there. And in verse 9, it says, When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water, that it was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servant which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth uh, put forth good wine, when, uh, when he have well drunk, that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. And so what would... What would uh, what would sustain Mary? What would give her peace? What would help her through this, this time of anxiety? Seeing the glory of God. Seeing the glory of Jesus. He performs this miracle and his mother is there with him and, and, and she sees him perform this miracle and do this, does this thing and witnesses the glory of God and realizes that, uh, that, oh yes, I remember now, this is the Son of God and he's not here just for me and, and I'm not just to worry about him, but his Heavenly Father has a purpose and a plan for his life and I need to get behind that. It's time for me to let him go. It's time for me to put him in his father's hands and know that he has a purpose and that God can take care of him much better than I as a mother can. He can do that. Let me ask you, mothers, what will sustain you through the pressures and the anxieties that you face as a mother? What will sustain you? What will help you through those, 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 those types of things? And I want to tell you today, you must put your children in the hands of God. No matter how young they are or, or how old they are, you must put them in the hands of God and realize that God has a greater plan for them, that God has a greater purpose for them than, than you ever could. We talked about in our Sunday school class today that the Bible says that, that God formed us in the womb and he had a plan for us even before we were born. And you might have plans and dreams and things that you want for your children, but God had plans before you did because he created them and he made them and he has a plan for them. And often we worry and we have anxiety over our children, but we don't realize they are God's. And I need to give them to him because he can take care of them much better than I ever can. We worry and have anxiety when we can have peace in God. We can have a peace and joy with God if we put them in his hands. He's got a plan. He has a purpose. And knowing that God is for you and that God is with you, 
You can sustain those times of worry. You can sustain those times of fear. You can put them in God's hands and you can know that he will take care of them. Turn to John chapter 19. It brings us to our text uh, for today. John chapter 19. Verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary and wife uh, Cleophas and Mary Magdalene when Jesus therefore saw his mother and disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then, he, then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. And so lastly, we saw a mother's joy, we saw a mother's anxiety, and now I want to look at a mother's salvation. Mother's salvation. As Mary stood there by the cross with three other ladies and only, only one of the disciples, John, I believe they just waited there in anticipation for him to speak, for him to say something. Hours were passing, and, and over the next uh, three hours, it would be six hours completely on the cross there, but the first three hours, he only speaks uh, three separate times. The first time, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and then he goes silent. And then later on, he speaks to the, 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 the criminal that's on the cross next to him, and he says, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise, because he believed. And then thirdly, he says to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Woman, behold thy son. And he wasn't saying, Look at me. He was saying, Look at John. He's your son now. He's saying, The relationship here is changing, it's changing permanently. I'm not, I, I'm not your son anymore. I'm your Savior. Amen. Look at John. Look at John. And so what prompted him saying this? Verse number 23 says here, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout and they said, they said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that, it, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. Therefore, uh, these things, therefore, the soldiers did. And so I noticed that the, 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 the soldiers here are, are casting lots for this, this beautiful garment. They ripped, a, they ripped the other garments in four pieces and were dividing them amongst themselves. But then they saw Jesus' coat. And they said, man, this coat is special. There's no seams in this coat. This is a special coat. We can't rip this coat. It's a beautiful coat. We have to give it to one of us. One of us has to take it. So let's cast lots for it. Charles Swindoll has this theory that, uh, that, his, that this, this was a, a coat that was made by his mother a special coat that was made by his mother and she poured her love into this coat and she, she, she sewed it and wove it with no seams and made it a special coat specifically for him. And as he saw the soldiers casting lots for that garment that his mother had made for him, it comes to his mind to say these words, Woman, behold thy son. So what brought about this? He watched them do that. And when he speaks these words, he's not speaking of himself, but he's speaking of John. And there's more going on than Jesus simply providing a future for his mother, a future care for his mother. There's much more going on than that because his relationship with his mother is going to change. And as she agonizes over her son and as he's there on the cross and, and slowly dying and she just, she's just agonizing over that and, and, and he says this to her, she's saying, no, Jesus, uh, no, you are my son, you will always be my son. And Jesus is basically saying to her, no, a relationship must change. 
A relationship must change. You must let me go. You must let me go. I'm not your son. I am your savior. You must turn those things around. And I believe on that day she loses an irreplaceable son but gains an an incomprehensible savior. She gains the savior of the world. Uh, She loses these things. but, but But the thing that she gains is so great. It's a gift to the entire world. She gains the love of a Savior that death could never take away from her. Death may take away, may take away our sons and our daughters. It may take away, uh, make it take away this life, but uh, we can never lose the eternal life. We can never lose those things that we lay up in glory. We can never lose our treasures in heaven. And so why point our kids to the things of this life? Why point them to the things of this world when we know they can lose those things? Point them to the Savior. Point them to riches in heaven and glory and treasures in heaven because those things they can can never lose. I'm not to point my kids to me. I can let them down. I'm pointing to the Savior who will never let them down, who will always be there for them. I'm going to point them to Jesus. And as a mother, uh, you were to do that. I'll tell you what, your life will be filled with anxiety if you don't. Give them to Jesus. They are his. Point them to him. And Mary gains the love of a Savior that death could never take away. In this life, death can take away our loved ones, but it can never take away our Savior. Jesus had given life to him in the flesh uh, for a time, but now uh, he gives life to her in the spirit that lasts for eternity. See, being a mother is a great gift, but it's not the greatest gift. Some of us have been blessed with a godly mother, and that's a great gift but it's not the greatest gift. Here's something beautiful and wonderful and glorious is an exchange for something of infinitely higher value. Now I pray that all our mothers here that are, are great mothers and that you do an amazing job taking care of your children and, and giving them love and giving you all those things. That's a great thing, but it's not the greatest thing. You must point them to the Savior. Point them to the Savior. A mother's role is typically the caretaker of the family, and and, and that's great. Uh, A mother's love is unmatched by by anything, uh, but God has placed children, given you children uh, for you to be stewards of. He's entrusted them with you. You're to to point them to him. You may know a, a mother's joy. You may know a mother's anxiety, but do you know a mother's salvation? Luke chapter 14 and verse 26, it says, If any man come to me and hate not his mother and father and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Mother, one of the greatest things you can do is love your children, but it's never greater than loving God. In fact, your love for God and your desire to point your children to God uh, should, 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 should be in the comparison of hate. I mean, your love for your children should seem like hate uh, as much as you love God and want to point them to God. As much as you can offer them in this life, it's nothing compared to what God can offer them. It's nothing compared to what God can, can give to them. We must, we must give them back to God. It's easy to quote verses to our kids like, Honor your parents. And obey your mom and dad. You know, it's easy to quote verses like that or to say to them, hey, remember who gave birth to you. It's easy to say things like that. But ultimately, what we should be saying, what you should be saying to your children is, behold the Savior. Look to Jesus. Look to God. He can take care of you. The best thing that a mother can do is point their children to the Savior. Only he can save their souls for all eternity. Only he can, give, can, can guide and direct them in that perfect plan that he has for their life. We have hopes and dreams for our children, but we, let's make sure that we, we know that God's plan is first. We point them to him. We direct them to him. We guide them to him. God has called you to be mothers, those of you who have children. He's called to you mothers. Are you, are you being a mother in the proper way? Are you pointing your children to Christ? 
And of course, as fathers, we have the same responsibility. And we all have the same responsibility to point others to Christ, to point others to the Savior. Are we pointing people to the Savior? Behold the Savior. My life should say that. My actions should say that. My words should say that. Behold the Savior. Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Lord, I thank you for this, this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the time that we could have in service today. Lord, I thank you for everybody who came out today, especially the mothers that are here today and, and those that, um, that might have come just because of the mothers. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I pray that your word would uh, uh, reveal to us today that we're to live our lives for you. We're to point others to you, God, and you are ultimately in control. You are the Savior of the world, and I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for us. Pray now that you bless in this time of invitation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As Brother Aaron sings a few verses of invitation, maybe there's someone here today who is not 100% sure that if they died today they'd be in heaven. Why don't you come forward? Someone will meet you here at the altar and show you how you can be saved today, and you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. And that would be that would be the greatest gift that you can ever give to your mother on Mother's Day. Why don't you come at this time? Allow someone to show you through the Word of God. If you have something else you'd like to pray for, you need to pray about God's conviction. How won't you come at this time? As Brother Aaron sings, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you. He's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. seated for a moment. Uh, for ushers, uh, could you grab uh, out of the back table, uh, we got some ushers back there. In the back table there are some uh, the faith promise cards. Uh, some, some of you may not have been here Sunday, last Sunday, weren't able to fill out a uh, faith promise card and would like to do that. If you br- can bring those faith promise cards forward and then um, after, we, after we collect those we will uh, um, honor our mothers that we didn't honor before service because we ran out. But All right, if you did not receive a faith promise card and you need one of those, just raise your hand as the ushers make their way back at this time. Get one of those faith promise cards to you. And uh, we took up uh, uh, promises last uh, Sunday. And uh, Sunday morning, it was the, the promise came in at 102000 uh, By Sunday night, it was up to 127000 and, uh, man, we'd like to get at least back up to where we were, 135000 And so if you weren't able to, to put your card in yet, uh, you can grab one of those cards. And as soon as you've finished passing those out, bring the offering plates forward, and we'll, we'll send those back so that you can uh, drop those in there. All right. And then um, if we just have two ushers come there, and then the other two can grab the uh, Dunkin' Donuts cards. And uh, go ahead and make your way forward. As, uh, those mothers who did not receive a Dunkin' Donuts card, yeah, would you stand? And uh, they'll pass those out there. All right. You got the, who's got them? You guys got them? Okay. You guys are doing double duty. So 
they're coming, they have the offering plates too. So if you'd like to put your faith promise in the offering plate while they're headed back there, you can do that also. And we'll get those handed out. All right, and if you, uh, if you didn't get to turn that faith promise card in, you can always uh, turn it in at the office or at the Welcome Center. We can grab it there, uh, too. And just to remind everybody, there is no uh, live service tonight, online only. So join us online at 6 o'clock. Got a st- special message uh, for everybody tonight. And, uh, uh, and so I want to make sure we... Uh, is able to to come and see that. All right, did we do it? We made it? All right, all right. We did it. All right, praise the Lord. Thank you for everybody for joining us today. Thank you for mothers who joined us today. If you'll stand and I'll have Brother Aaron come and dismiss us in word of prayer. And so online services tonight are online only. And then Wednesday, mark your calendars. Brother Sasser will be here, and you don't want to miss that. Great speaker and excited. That if you didn't sign up for the ladies' things, you can do that at the back there. Dixie Sasser will be speaking this Saturday, 11 to 2, and that's going to be a great time. And sign up for the, uh, uh, the David show too, ladies, if you'd like to go for that. Deadline is Wednesday. Brother Aaron, would you close this, please? Real quick, just one more announcement about the hymn sing. Please, let, if you're going to go, let uh, myself or Brother Mitz know. And if you come, we ask that you bring some sort of dessert or a little something to pass around for afterwards. So that's Friday, 6 o'clock, the hymn sing. Let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, thank you so much for today, God, and just for the time we get to be here in your house and hear your word. And just thank you for all the mothers here, Lord, all the hard work they do and how much they love and care for us, Lord. And I pray that you help us to take today to to honor them, Lord, and and give them a good day, Lord. I pray that you help us to take what we learn in the message and supply it to our lives, God. And I pray that you'd be with everything uh, everything that's said and done the rest of the day that brings honor and glory to you. Be with the services on Wednesdays. We have Brother Sasser here and pray that uh, uh, you just be with him, give him the words to speak, Lord, and be with that service there. And we just thank you so much, Lord. We love you. Be with anybody who's sick or not feeling well or at this time, I pray you'd comfort them and strengthen them, Lord. We just thank you so much and love you and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.